So about a month ago, I was watching Intel's videos that they were making, their own promotional videos on the new Battlemage GPUs. And in particular, one thing caught my eye and that was the latency. And in particular, reducing the latency with Battlemage over the previous generation Alchemist GPUs. That would be the A770, A750, and GPUs like that. And so we've got this graphics card in the studio here, the B580, as well as an Arc A770, an RTX 4060, an RX 7600, as well as the old but gold GTX 1080 Ti. And we've also got access to a 1000 FPS camera, as well as a device that I built years ago that measures input latency from end to end. In other words, we've got a mouse click that registers and you know that mouse click is registering because an LED light will light up as soon as the mouse is actuated. So this means that we can manually test input latency claims here at Tech yes City at least to one millisecond accuracy by testing when this LED light comes on and then seeing when something changes on the screen in response to that actuation. And so here today, we've tested this across three different games, Fortnite, Counter-Strike 2, as well as Dota 2, and we've tested it over two different systems. One of those is a 10400T system, which will be making an appearance in another video testing out the performance on older systems. And this thing is clocked quite low. It's also PCIe Gen 3. And then we've got a newer system, which is the Ryzen 7 9800X3D. And we're gonna be testing on 1080p 520 Hertz to see if Intel's claims of this latency reduction are actually true, or if they're actually sort of somewhere in the middle, or if they're just total bogus, which <laughs> out of these results that we got here today, we've kind of got a bit of a mix of the latter two. So short answer, more marketing spill from a company. <laughs> Long answer, let's get into the results right after today's video sponsor. Do you need to get Windows 10 or Windows 11 activated and don't wanna spend $200 or some other exorbitant price? Well, if so, today's video sponsor, VIP SCD Keys, has you covered. For as little as $15 using the coupon code BFTYC, you can get Windows 10 activated. For a little bit more, you can get Windows 11 activated too. Links in the description below to find out more. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. And the first game that we're gonna focus on here is Fortnite, which was actually the game that pretty much piqued my curiosity. When I saw on Gamers Nexus, they had an interview with the Intel graphics design team and they were talking about the input uh, latency in a dedicated section on that video. I'll put the link up here. But one thing that interested me the most was there was a slide on Fortnite and it was really just a slide out of nowhere on the TV there where I couldn't find actually any more information on this slide that was presented. I just saw this slide in the video and I saw six millisecond reduction and I knew that was quite a huge claim to make, especially in a competitive game like Fortnite. And so I wanted to test this out more and I wanted to actually find out more information about the settings used and everything like that. And then I went to Intel's dedicated video on the topic and I went to find out more information and I tried everywhere to find more information on this slide. And all I got was in the end, I dug through the website and I just ended up at this section with a little bit of text talking about how the responsiveness has been improved. And then there was a photo of a guy who's just so happy. He's over the moon and ecstatic about, wait for it guys, we'll pull up the graph right now, a 0.1 millisecond of an average difference here between the ARC A770 and the B580. Now this is at 1080p at 520 hertz, but again, we're testing in Fortnite on performance mode to extract the biggest differences between these GPUs in input latency. And if there is a difference, because it's what a lot of Fortnite competitive pros are going to use. They're going to wanna get the fastest draw possible, the, the highest FPS, they're gonna want as minimal stuttering as possible. And so these settings, I believe, are more indicative of when you would want to lower the input latency as much as possible. And here we just saw virtually no difference on the high-end Ryzen 7 9800X3D system. Then we go over to the low-end system right here, the 10400T, and we yet again saw a very minimal difference something that just wasn't anywhere near the realm of six milliseconds. Even when it came to the worst draw on the frame, that's the worst frame that we saw in our testing here, I could not get a six millisecond difference. So this leads me to believe that perhaps in that original frame, there was an A758 gigabyte and 1440p, they might've maxed the settings and come into a VRAM constrained section where perhaps, yeah, you could extract a big difference 
in that scenario, especially if the VRAM's being pressured with an eight gigabyte card versus a 16 gigabyte card. And how Intel got this six millisecond difference, I'll actually never know because I cannot find the original slide nor the testing configuration at all. And I've scoured the internet for it and I just can't find it. Though summing up Fortnite with all these five graphics cards here, whether you're on a low end system or a high end system, there's not a huge difference between the three different manufacturers, whether it's one generation over the other, or in the case of the 4060 versus 1080 Ti, it's not gonna make a huge difference to your competitive experience, especially when we compare that to other factors. And this is one thing I'm gonna point out probably a few more times in this video, your internet connection, your mouse, and then ultimately your display that you're using are gonna be three things that are much more important than the actual manufacturer of the GPU in terms of getting the best input latency possible. At least that's the conclusion I've drawn from Fortnite. And then pulling up Counter-Strike 2 on the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D system. We didn't get a huge difference here from the A770 to the B580. I think the worst we saw here was a two millisecond difference on the worst frame. And then with the RTX 4060, that actually came in top spot on both the high end and the low end system. But it was interesting to see with Counter-Strike 2 on the 10400T system, that scored better than the RX 7600, the B580, and the A770. So PCIe Gen 3 with this uh, Counter-Strike 2 engine that perhaps uses older elements of the original uh, Counter-Strike source engine is probably playing really well with the 10400T setup. Now, another thing to talk about before we get on to Dota 2 is you may be wondering why are the 10400T results actually quite a bit lower, not just in Fortnite, but also in now Counter-Strike 2. And the reason for this is the FPS is actually just a lot lower compared to the 9800X 3D. And because we're on a 520 hertz monitor, in actually uh, these two first case scenarios here, the games will actually give out actually quite significantly faster frames with the 520 hertz monitor because they're actually getting around 520 FPS. You'll see in the next game here, Dota 2, the maximum difference is actually uh, reduced quite significantly, but there is some curveballs here to throw in, which I thought was very interesting. And we'll start with the low end system here where the A770 actually beat out the B580 on the 10400T system. And I was actually surprised by this result because it means that some driver level optimization is still yet needed, especially when it comes to getting the best frame times in Dota 2 with the B580 Battle Mage Arc GPU. The other four cards here performed as they should. Though moving up to the high end system, here's where in Dota 2, the B580 scored right around the same level as the RTX 4060. So I was really surprised by this. And in fact, in uh, the settings menu, what we did here was we enabled on all these GPUs, the either the two option, if that was available on AMD, then on the Intel, we turned on the game on plus boost from the driver level. And then we turned on for Nvidia, the on plus boost, which was available in all three games. So after looking at those three games across those two different systems, it's time for a conclusion here with the input delay across Nvidia, AMD and Intel on these mid range GPUs. And the answer in my opinion is it's not a big difference. This is not going to make a huge difference to knowing whether you are going to be um, being an absolute pro or being terrible at a game. I think the millisecond differences here are very small across the board. And if anything, as we said before, focusing on getting a mouse with lower input latency, I've seen mice with 10 milliseconds of input delay just from the mouse itself. Getting a monitor with a low latency under 10 milliseconds, again, very important. Some monitors can carry 20, 30, even 40 milliseconds input delay. And then getting ultimately as well an internet connection that has low latency is very important too. Because if, for instance, if I play Dota 2, I'm getting around 30 milliseconds delay from my pings on the internet itself. And so doing those things versus the GPU here, we saw where the best case and worst case scenarios were a couple of milliseconds at best it's not gonna make a big difference to your game. But back to Intel's claims of the six millisecond drop in Fortnite, I was very curious to look for that difference and I didn't find it, at least in the testing that we did here today. And sure, they can say, well, we had 1440p high settings and we're only getting 60 FPS or 80 FPS or something like that. But still, when we're looking at these games and we're looking at getting the best input latency possible, I believe things like this would definitely focus on first and foremost, a competitive gamer. And a competitive gamer is not gonna be playing 1440p ultra settings in Fortnite, nor are they gonna be playing uh, the finals with frame generation on. Like I said yesterday, when we were looking at Nvidia's um, announcement with 
the new RTX 5000 series, I talked about me just focusing on Valorant and that end-to-end -end latency with Reflex 2. The finals didn't interest me at all because competitive gamers aren't gonna be using frame generation period. They're gonna be looking for the lowest latency possible. So basically here, getting past all the marketing, I do believe there's not much of a difference and it's not one thing to upgrade to the B580 from the A770. If you've already got an ARC card and you're enjoying that and you're like, well, man, if I get that Battle Mage card, I'll be playing a bit better competitively. The answer is actually really not so much. In fact, if you're on a lower end system in Dota 2, you're actually gonna see worse input lag. So that's the conclusion I've drawn here today. I will be testing this out on the RTX 5000 series cards too. I am keen to see if we can get better draws with input latency, especially the 520 hertz monitor. Also, there is one more thing I'm pretty sure people will want to talk about, and that's the F1 2024 that Intel was showing. And when I looked at at least the footage they were showing, it was ultra high settings. And I'm thinking, well, again, back to the Fortnite example, ultra high is something that people aren't gonna be using when they want the lowest latency possible. But also in that particular game, I don't know how to get a left click on my mouse to actuate a response on the screen, to test that accurately. So that was one of the games that I did decide not to test because I think there's some complications there in actually getting you guys accurate results. But also when it came to Dota 2, people would be wondering, well, your system set up for left click, how did you accurately get results for Dota 2? And that's where in Windows, I was able to switch the right click and left click and then use the left click like it would be a right click in Dota 2. And that gave us the response mechanism of seeing the character make a movement after a left, which was technically a right click, was actuated. Anyhow guys, with all that out of the way, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button for us. If you have any questions or comments about today's video and content, be sure to drop a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Also stay tuned for tomorrow's video where we're gonna be testing out the Battle Mage on the 10400T system with FPS and looking at the differentials between that and the Ryzen 7 9800X3D system. And it's got some interesting results in there for sure. Anyhow guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out for now, bye.